Go out to Walterboro where our team is standing by. Our Ann McGill and Michael Higdon out there for us right now. A lot happening behind you guys right now. How's it been down there? Rob and Cameron, thank you so much. Yeah, very busy right now. Michael Higdon is here with me and just behind us. Everybody just coming out of the courtroom right now. Michael, you were inside mm -hmm. the courtroom when the verdict was read. Tell us about that. Well, I will tell you before um, uh, Alec himself was brought in, the bailiff made an announcement. Again, we've heard it multiple times this week. There will be absolutely no cheering from the gallery. There will be no comments made. They, uh, they had, I would say, five to six extra deputies in the courtroom uh, for this verdict, saying that if you were to make a peep, you will be escorted out of that courtroom so fast. When Alec came in, his demeanor seemed very calm, I will say. Um, I think it was before the cameras actually panned to him. He was talking uh, pretty meaningfully with Dick and with Jim, his defense attorneys. Um, not really smiling, but didn't seem nervous at all, mm -hmm. kind of what we've seen. Mm -hmm. um, once the jury was brought in and we did know that we did have a verdict, Little to no emotion from him when they when they read out the, that guilty verdict on two charges of murder and two uh, uh, counts of possession of a viol of a weapon during a violent crime. I have to say the same thing. We were watching the feed and you know during the whole time when he was so emotional, you know when he was testifying um, about the the murders and testifying about his uh, drug over um, use, his drug substance abuse. He was always very emotional, but tonight we definitely noticed he was just stoic. There was no emotion during closing arguments. These last two days, both with the state and the defense. So I, we've always seen when the, when they start describing the scene and the graphicness of uh, how they were brutally murdered, you would see that emotion from his face. But during closing arguments, these last two days, there has been nothing. I will say the only emotion I saw from him, and I don't think the cameras could see it because he turned around. This is the first time that we have seen him actually put in handcuffs in the courtroom. Um, as soon as the judge said that he has been charged with murder, uh, deputies, please take him away. He, he was already standing. Uh, the deputy took out his handcuffs. He turned around to get handcuffed and he was looking at Buster who was in the row It's the farthest row on the right side. It's been next to us. Buster had been uh, wiping away tears when when that uh, guilty verdict was read. Buster was looking down. Alec was looking at Buster and nodding his head and you could see that's when the tears were in his eyes. You bring up Buster and I had just been thinking about him. When you think about him now, he has lost his entire immediate family. His mother and his brother were killed and now his father is going to prison for those murders. His immediate entire family has basically now been wiped out. Yes. Now, uh, Michael was inside of the courtroom. Blair Sable and I have been out here and, and this morning, Michael, mm -hmm. we saw one of the jurors who was not dismissed but kicked kicked off mm -hmm. of the jury, kicked off of the jury this morning. Blair Sable has more on the makeup of the jury. Blair? Yeah, and I, I want to point something out right now. The defense team, they have just walked out of the courtroom. They are actually walking. It seems to be away from the media. There is a large pool of reporters and photographers right outside of the courthouse. I believe that there is expected to be a press conference, but yet again, uh, the defense team, they are walking away. It's unclear if they're going to speak uh, broadly about uh, this case. The verdict just coming down guilty on all counts. And this was a very quick verdict, as we've talked about, less than three hours for this jury to get to this consensus. I want to point out uh, what this jury's makeup was. Again, we started with 18 total jurors, 12 main jurors with six alternates. Up until today, we ended up with one with that last juror being dismissed for improper conversations by Judge Newman. And so that makeup is seven white men, three white women, two black women, and the alternate was a black woman. Now, she did stay on, but she was not involved with any of these final deliberations. Again, very quick, uh, as we've mentioned several times before. Uh, it did not take them a lot of time. We didn't really hear about them having to go back over all of the evidence that was talked about in this case. Remember, we had videos from Paul's phone. We had a Snapchat video. We had data from all of the cell phones from Alec, Maggie, and Paul. We had data uh, from his, uh, his, his car uh, that was actually just cracked about a week before this verdict. They actually had brought in an expert um, to go over all of that over the weekend. So just an incredible amount of time spent for this entire trial all to come down to less than three hours. And like I mentioned, it, it looks like we are getting uh, ready for a press conference at this point. Uh, we don't know who we're expecting to hear from. Presumably the attorney general's office who has stayed quiet this entire time leading up to to the trial and throughout the trial. So, Anne, it'll be really interesting to hear what they have to say. I'm going to toss it back to you for now.
All right, Blair, thank you very much. Now, when we first started this process, um, we were told that the trial would likely be three weeks long. Well, now here we are almost six weeks later and uh, 28 days into this case with dozens of uh, witnesses in the case and several dozen pieces of evidence that were admitted as well in the case against Alec Murdoch in the double killings of his wife and his son. Early on, um, or actually just a, a couple of months before this trial happened, the prosecution decided it would not seek the death penalty. And when I asked Mark Pepper about that earlier, he says it's because it's going to be difficult enough to find 12 impartial jurors and the alternates in the county where this happened and where so many people know Alec Murdoch. To find 12 jurors and six alternates who would then also be willing to find him guilty and be willing to put him to death would have stretched this trial far beyond even the six weeks where we are now. But the jury made a quick decision this evening after only less than actually less than three hours, less than three hours of deliberations. The jury came back today with that guilty verdict on all counts against Alec Murdoch. There were two counts of possession of a weapon during the commission of a violent crime and the two counts of murder, the murders of his wife, Margaret Maggie Murdoch. She was 52 years old and his baby boy, Paul, who was 22 years old. The verdict is in and it is guilty. Cameron Roth. All right, Ann, thank you very much. And I also want to say that our team has done a phenomenal job mm -hmm. out there at the courthouse.